Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. This week I'm going to be completing a journey that I started over a year ago and that is building a series of eight reverse sleeper PCs. And that is to say as many of the components in this machine are going to be new so that they're more reliable, but also each of these PCs is going to have specific set of hardware to the era in which they exist. The PC that I'm going to be building today and the final one in this uh, series is this Harris 20 MHz 286 PC. And I'm gonna be putting it in this NZXT case. So of course, first, we're gonna need to make ourselves a drink. This week's cocktail is a simple cocktail and it's called the Last Word Cocktail. And it is just four equal parts of each of the four ingredients, which in this case, I'm gonna be using one ounce each you can use 30 milliliters, you can use two gallons, whatever. All the ingredients, it's the same amount. So we're gonna start off with one ounce dry gin, one ounce maraschino, one ounce chartreuse. In this case, I'm using the green chartreuse and one ounce lemon juice. Add some ice and shake. And we strain that into our glass. And there we have the last word. Cheers. That is pretty strong. All right, let's get building this 286. So for this build, I'm gonna be using this 286 motherboard. And this uh, has a Harris 286 20 megahertz CPU and uh, six 16-bit ISA slots. Of course, I'm gonna be replacing this battery um, with uh, this external battery pack because I don't want that on my motherboard. Um, we're gonna be using this Adaptech AVA 1505-1515 SCSI controller card and I'm using that because I'm going to be running a SCSI to SD adapter for my hard drive and that's because in these older machines I feel that the BIOS usually does a pretty bad job of detecting the, the uh, compact flash IDE cards and this just makes things simpler and easier. Uh, this is the, the uh, version 5.2 of the SCSI to SD adapter. For sound, I'm gonna be using this AdLib uh, clone card. This one was produced by Monotech. For the uh, IO, for my parallel and serial and floppy controller, I'm gonna be using this WinBond controller that I picked up from Computer Reset. And for my video card, I'm gonna be using this Singlabs ET4000AX, which I also picked up from Computer Reset. So that's gonna be my build. Now for the case, I'm using this NZXT H510. Now I actually already used this exact case to do my 386 build and then ended up swapping the 386 to a different case. And so it already has in it a 450 watt Corsair power supply, and it actually already has the GoTech floppy emulator integrated into the case. And I'll go ahead and show how I did that later. But of course, let's uh, start by desoldering this battery and uh, getting this installed into the case. This is the battery that we're gonna want to remove. It looks like it pretty, should be pretty simple these two big globs here. So I guess let's go ahead and try this. And ta-da. All right, we're back. I got that battery removed. I'm ready to put this in the case. Now I went ahead and uh, purchased just a blank ATX um, backplate and drilled a hole here for the 
the keyboard. So just so you know, that's not gonna be happening on video because it's already happened. Cool, so the fun thing with putting these old boards in new cases is sometimes there's not that many screws that actually line up. So we'll see how many do and what we can do with it. So, so already I'm moving one of the standoffs to help it to line up better. So this is the first motherboard I've dealt with that doesn't line up with this screw here, or this standoff here, um, which usually adds a lot of support for me. And these seem to be off by just a little bit. Uh, they're a little further forward in the case. And so I might just have to tape over these and uh, so that they don't conduct electricity, but still stand it off. <laughs> uh, but these two screws do line up with screw holes. Um, that one doesn't, that one doesn't, that one doesn't, and that one doesn't. And of course, that's because this is for an AT case, not for an ATX case. So I think what I might use is this plastic snap-in standoff because I can't slide it in, and so that's just gonna add as a spacer. And then it doesn't run the risk of conducting electricity. So we'll go ahead and pull all of these standoffs out, except for the two. Again, we know these two will work, and the rest kind of don't, so I'm just gonna pop in a couple of these standoffs. One there. Cool. Not the most ideal, but again, just kind of hacking this together, so. Nice. Cool, so now that's attached. <laughs> Maybe not the most securely, but We've got it in there, got our speaker wires, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that guy in there. Okay, so of course with these AT to ATX power supply conversion things, the thing that I didn't learn until way too late was that the black wires on these two <laughs> go together. Uh, I once put it in backwards and blew up a motherboard. So there we go. Okay, power, motherboard. So, I always like to start with the I.O. And I've got the ribbon for the GoTech already here. Okay, so, got that guy in there. So for the SCSI to SD, there's not a good spot. This cable isn't long enough, my internal, to get it to like a drive bay, not that it really has them, but to put them somewhere else. But I did get this 3D printed for a version six version of the board. And it seems to line up exactly with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy, which will then put the SCSI to SD in a card slot which is awesome.
Ah, nice and threaded. Now that we have that attached, our SCSI to SD, can go ahead and get that put in. Probably do something like this. Let's try that. Now we've got our I.O. We've got our floppy controller to our GoTech. We've got our SCSI controller to our SCSI to SD. And now we can do the fun things like sounds and graphics. I'm gonna put my graphics card here in this last slot. And finally, our AdLib card. All right, so now let's plug this in and see if it works. We've got this guy assembled and uh, plugged in a monitor and a keyboard. And uh, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if we get anywhere. Ooh. We've got an issue with the RAM not seating in here properly. There we go. Hmm. Looks like the SCSI adapter is not seeing the SCSI to SD. I wonder if it's a too old of a version of the SCSI card or what? And then of course, I'd need to put a bootable drive in. All right, um, well, I'm going to uh, do some testing and uh, I'll be back after that. So for some reason, I cannot get the SCSI card to recognize the SCSI to SD as a hard drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to just do a compact flash card. At this 256 megabyte sand disk, which should be more than enough for DOS on this guy. I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm just gonna mount it up here. So I'm just gonna go into CMOS here and set this. So I happen to have a motherboard, another motherboard that uh, is great because I can plug in these compact flash cards and the BIOS will auto detect and tell me the hard drive specs. Um, I've not been able to find a really good calculator other than, than that motherboard that I have. Um, and so uh, I happened to just plug this compact flash into that a while ago and uh, it gave me the specs. So that's what I'm going to type in now. And so then it says 245 megabytes, which pretty close and uh, we'll just go ahead with that. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in my USB uh, floppy drive for the, the GoTech. And the way I've wired it is I actually put the screen here in the case. And since it's gonna have a glass panel, then I can still see what I need to on the uh, USB stick. And then I actually uh, soldered wires to buttons that I put under the front of the case here. And this allows me to flip through the different uh, things on the USB stick. But of course, right now, I'm gonna go and install DOS. So I went ahead and queued up MS-DOS 3.31 and hopefully this gets us somewhere. Cool, and I'm just gonna run FDisk. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new partition. Use the maximum that we can. And I'm gonna restart.
this. Let's see if this will boot. Nice. All right. Well, it looks like we successfully have DOS installed. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the compact flash card out, copy some apps and utilities over and get this set up in its final spot. And uh, we'll be back to take a look at this new and final 286. All right, so here it is all put together. Uh, I went ahead and removed the SCSI to SD currently uh, because the compact flash is working. And uh, I might be able to use it in, you know, something like a Mac because it's, those, those are expensive and the Macs have to use a SCSI. This is what almost all of the eight computers have uh, set up for them. So they all, or most of them have this ViewSonic uh, monitor, which you can still purchase new off of Amazon. Um, and it's a four by three, or maybe it's a five by four aspect ratio, but it's close enough that it doesn't seem to bother me. Um, and then I have these, um, these are from um, Monoprice. So uh, those are the new things, of course, with the case. Uh, this keyboard is just a PS2 keyboard that I had lying around. Um, I eventually want to do mechanical keyboards, but it gets expensive and it's hard to find a PS2 mechanical keyboard. Oh, and then uh, I'm using this uh, Precision Instruments uh, serial mouse, uh, which I picked up new in box for really, really cheap. So um, I might switch it out later, but for right now it works. And so let's go ahead and run some tests here. So the first thing I'm gonna run is just to see if uh, we get some sound from this AdLib card. So I forgot how to spell for a second. Nice, I like the CGA color palette. Um, let's go with, oh, let's do O oh, Win the Saints. Nice. Two. Ooh. Elect Rock. <laughs> if I go to Windows, which I have Windows 286, you know, version two installed since it is a 286 and we can see we've got our mouse working. Everything's good here. And we'll just go ahead and launch paint. And it's terrible paintiness. And let's see here. Nice. <laughs> Wait, are there only two colors? Oh, palette. Uh, tools? No. There we go. Do some cutouts. Haven't used this version of paint very often, so. Of course, these are still PC speaker, not using the AdLib card because of the nature of when they're programmed. I went ahead and installed King's Quest IV, which would be a little late for a 286, but I know a lot of people would have still played it on the 286. Test out that ad lib. Thank you. 
it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the box. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the box. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crunch. So anyway. There's my reverse sleeper 286 build. It's a pretty simple, straightforward video, uh, just putting a computer together, but it's one that took a lot longer to get together than I wanted to because I kept getting really bad shape 286 motherboards. Uh, and so I finally got one that worked and finally am able to put this machine together, which I'm very excited about because it completes the octet, the eight, PCs of different eras from an XT to a Pentium 4, so uh, it's very cool. The 286 is actually really near and dear to me because this is the machine that I mostly played uh, PC games on. Uh, I had a XT, or a PC, original PC, and then had a 286, and that's when I discovered all the Sierra Adventure games, and that's when I played a lot of the Sierra Adventure games. And then eventually I got a, a 486, but it was almost past the time um, when I was playing a lot of this stuff. So 286 is really near and dear to me, and uh, I'm excited that I finally have uh, one here set up kind of in the demo area to, to use. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know it was a pretty simple video, but uh, yeah, if you like it, go ahead and comment. If you have any questions or suggestions or know what's going on with the SCSI to SD, why it's not working here, anything, just go ahead and say, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.